this or yeah that's fine okay and so i say should relationship Uh, my name is uh, Douglas Ward. I was born on June 19th, 1920, and currently I'm 88 years old. I graduated from high school in 1938. I had taken what they considered was a college course as compared to the uh, preparing for just work in a mill or something of that sort, and uh, applied to a college. Being the depression years, college was costly and uh, my folks did not have that much at the time. They wanted me to go to college if I could, but they, they could see that it was going to be a problem. My sister was still in college at that time. Once I got a job, why college was, was forgotten for the time being. Right after Pearl Harbor, I had been classified as eligible for the draft and uh, decided that I would try to get into the Air Force rather than be drafted. My folks were quite content. They knew that I would be drafted and uh, encouraged me to try to get into the best service that I could. It, it was more or less of an honor to support your country after Pearl Harbor. And by enlisting, you did have a choice of Navy, Army, Air Force, whatever was available. And uh, we all figured that, you know, the infantry was the way you were gonna get shot at mostly. So you'd try to avoid that if you could. And fortunately, I did. <laughs> I did my basic training at Shamut Field, Illinois, and attended school there for aircraft mechanic. And eventually we ended up uh, in Norfolk, Virginia, with a squadron forming to do ground support for troops. Once we went overseas to England, we were assigned to our own plane as a, as a crew chief, uh, planes were flying over France as support and made bombing runs, mostly on the railways, uh, bringing supplies up. We played leapfrog with the advanced infantry groups and we would advance at another air base and we'd use that airport until we got too far away to give the ground support the service that they needed. Never had any casualty of the enlisted men in our squadron. We were far enough away from the front line uh, to feel pretty safe. I think the only time we ever saw enemy at all was a dead one and that was when we first went to France. They, as you travel along the roadside there were still bodies there. They weren't the best thing to see but uh, that was just where the, the fighting had taken place. As the troops got up into Germany and they were capturing the land, we went to Germany, Germany to Holland and so on and so forth until the Armistice was signed. Uh, upon returning home from service, I 
was the only one home that time. So I worked with my dad in the, in the bakery for some time uh, until I went back to work, which happened very quickly because veterans were entitled to go back to their company. I started taking more night classes, took up advertising and, and sales. At that time, Dad sold the business and the house that we were living in and uh, bought a new home over the opposite side of the city, which was completely strange to everyone. And uh, I was 25 when I came out of service and uh, wanted to leave home. That made me think of moving on, getting married, because financially things were looking up. My job seemed kind of secure, and I had become very friendly with this gal that I met at school. She was from an Italian family, and I was from an English family. So there was friction on both ends, but uh, none between us. We just clicked and decided, well, let's, let's do it. We had a very nice wedding. We had found an apartment and uh, somehow you'll get pregnant. <laughs> After about 45 years uh, in the family mansion, we wanted to move out of the city and we moved into this beautiful old town and have, were very happy here for two years when my wife passed away very suddenly and unex very unexpectedly. So I am living here today alone with my cat who doesn't like Matthew Everybody. especially. Uh, and at 88, I am just marking my time and uh, enjoying life to the best of my ability. So, That's great. I don't know what else.